joins us live here on the telephone, talking a little bit about uh, all sorts of different things. Uh, a tremendous, tremendous topic today here on our big program, and we go, of course, now to the telephones. Uh, African Lives Matter 2 is the topic, and of course, uh, a new study shows how American clean coal technology can increase access to electricity and cut deaths from indoor air pollution. And uh, we have got an energy analyst with us today, Dr. Caleb Stewart Rosmitis, and uh, the ex executive director of the CO2 Coalition of 50 Climate Scientists and Energy Economists. Doctor, welcome to the program. How are you, sir? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you, James. Thank you very much. Now, how do you pronounce your last name? Because I know I butchered that. <laughs> Yeah, that was that. That was sort of a first, you know. Traveling in the Middle East and in Africa, I'm used to my name Caleb being pronounced Khalib. And Khalib, yes, <laughs> Khalib, <but>, baby. <laughs> but uh, Rossiter is not that tough. Rossiter. Rossiter. Okay. Well, I always like to refer to myself as Jiggy Jag the Ugly American, so uh, I, 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 I I at least get some of these things. Uh, so I, I like the I like the fact that they they pronounce it Kalib. That's awesome. Uh, so so doctor, tell us a little bit about this uh, the, the 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 study that's out there that uh, shows how American energy technology basically is 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 helping the world out here. Well, American energy technology uh, could be helping the world out here, but I'm sorry to say that while President Trump is pardoning the Thanksgiving turkey this afternoon, uh, <laughs> I, I certainly hope he should also be pardoning <laughs> Africa from this climate change uh, madness, this great fear that we're destroying the world. And in fact, there haven't been any changes in rates of extreme weather in the last 50 years uh, uh, because of, you know, carbon dioxide induced warming from fossil fuel electricity. And because of those fears from the Obama administration, our country has a policy of blocking African countries from building the power plants they want because they need loans from the World Bank or from the U.S. government uh, to do it. Um, if anyone who's ever traveled in Africa, the first thing they'll tell you is the lights go off all the time. Only a third yeah. of the continent, a third, has electricity. And that means the water doesn't get cleaned and people die from, you know, in, 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 infant mortality is high because the water is dirty. People have to cook indoors with wood and charcoal and, and animal dung. And uh, 400,000 people a year, according to the World Health Organization, die from the air pollution that's inside the house with pneumonia and bronchitis. Wow. We could be helping those countries. They want to buy our technology. We have plants that completely scrub the pollutants out of the, uh, out of the energy after the coal is burned. Um, Africa is about, well, I think, I'd say about 15 years behind in life expectancy to the rest of the world. That could be fixed with electricity, and yet we are blocking it, not providing it. Why are we blocking that? Is it just come down to what it always comes down to, which is money? <laughs> no. Is that what it comes down to? No, this is one case that, uh, James, I've been mystified for the two years I've been running this coalition of climate scientists and energy economists as to why... So many people, uh, particularly lockstep in the Democratic Party today, uh, a party of which I'm a member, um, says that we, by burning fossil fuels to create electricity, are um, destroying the planet by causing more hurricanes, earthquakes, God knows what all. And the data simply don't support that, but even if they did, Africa produces so little CO2, it couldn't be much part of the problem. So Africa's been caught in something you might call carbon colonialism, the same way that American <laughs> okay. fears, incorrect fears about DDT uh, uh, harming people back in the 60s led to a cutoff of, of DDT for Africa and millions died of malaria. These, these crazy environmental ideas in the West where we're very scared of the future and always you know, uh, scared of technology uh, really pay off in Africa and uh, pay off in a very negative, negative way by blocking people from getting the development that they deserve. It's just a, it's almost a religion that there's something wrong with, with energy, electricity, wealth, we're going to use up all the world's resources, we've got too many people, whatever, that whole echo religion 
uh, is Africa's paying the price for Europe and America believing in it. Tune in. iTunes, of course. Uh, you can get more information on what we're up to on Spotify as well. And we have a, a tremendous guest with us today. He joins us live here in a broadcast. And, uh, Doctor, you're, tell us how we can find you on the web and uh, websites and everything else. Oh, thanks, James. Um, our coalition has some of the America's, maybe the world's finest climate scientists and energy engineers who get together to write and speak. They call themselves, ironically, the CO2 Coalition, <laughs> uh, meaning you've got That's to understand awesome. how much goodness comes out of fossil fuels and of carbon dioxide as a plant fertilizer. Uh, it's not just something that's r raising temperatures. Um, and we are at CO2Coalition.org, and this new report about African Lives Matter, encouraging the United States to help export its technology to Africa for clean clean energy that can save lives, is the first thing you'll see on that webpage, CO2Coalition.org, uh, when you get there. Fantastic. So, uh what has been some reaction that you've gotten from uh, from this? You know, it's interesting at this time of the transition between the Trump administration and the Biden administration that um, we're hoping that the Trump administration will take the necessary steps because the executive branch here decides on our votes at the World Bank and decides on our foreign aid position. Uh, it's, President Trump did a lot of wonderful things on energy. He yeah. assisted the fracking revolution that brings down prices for us, and that saves lives here by making heating more affordable in the in, 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 in the winter time. Um, he got us out of the Paris Climate Agreement, in which the Chinese would do nothing and we would destroy yeah. our economy yeah. for no particular reason. Um, and he got rid of the Obama Clean Power Plan that it was re restraining the building of uh, uh, coal plants and natural gas plants that we need for our electricity. Uh, you know, there's a saying that in, in environmentalists are for every form of energy except the one that works. You know, they, they don't want to have coal and gas. They don't want to have nuclear. They don't want to have dams. They don't want any anything, but 80% of our energy comes from fossil fuels. So we have uh, – Trump got to almost everything, but he didn't quite get to our votes on foreign aid and the, and the World Bank, which we fund, to help Africa. So the policies of the World Bank that in our – government, which used to support power plants in Africa so the African countries can build them and then pay us back from their economic growth, has now barred the funding for clean coal technology. He could reverse that in the next few days. We'd see what Biden would do with it later. But we're really the reaction we're seeing, James, is people calling on the Trump administration to pardon not just the Turkey, but to pardon Africa from this climate catastrophe uh, madness. We've got a tremendous guest with us today, and uh, he joins us live here on the telephone. And uh, so, so doctor, this this whole thing is just fascinating to me that uh, there has been so much not talked about with this. Uh, why is this such a topic that that news and media just won't talk about? Well, I think you've seen the beginning of cancel culture, which now affects much of our country. If you have a different opinion from the liberal mainstream on uh, matters of race or education or politics, you're not going to get listened to or published in the mainstream. Uh, it's, it really got started with climate change. I was a professor of statistics uh, in the 2000s and 2010s, uh, teaching students how to look at claims that numbers of hurricanes or rate of sea level rise had come up and was damaging the world, uh, teaching them the statistical tools of how to do that. Um, on my campus, I could literally not get heard uh, without being shouted down, without being censored. Um, I was fired from a left-wing think tank for pointing out that Africa needs electricity, uh, the heck with climate change. There's just been a very strident, well-funded effort to censor on social media and in academia and in the newspapers um, anyone who says, hold up a second, where's the proof that we have a climate crisis that's damaging anything? We had just as much uh, heat, storms, fires, sea level rise back in 1920, which is 40 years before CO2 could have had an impact on warming. There's been a sort of a takeover of the media and academia 
uh, by the belief that we're in a climate crisis, which, uh, goodness, they just appointed John Kerry some energy czar for the climate crisis <laughs> when there isn't one. That's probably yes. the one thing we... we, we we, we, that's probably the one thing the government can do absolutely nothing about, and they're saying that's going to be the focus of the Biden administration. You cannot change the climate <laughs> by government action. Well, and then the fact that they put a uh, <laughs> put a guy like John Kerry in there, who uh, whose policies and some of his craziness has led to a, <laughs> led to the beginning of the climate crisis. Why would you put yeah, the guy who started it in charge? <laughs> Uh, because the base of the Democratic Party, I think, wants to bring down our energy industry. I can't quite figure out why, but they're very scared of growth. I think we're going to use up all the resources. I mean, these folks, James, go back to Malthus, the great uh, economic philosopher of the 17th century, and his fears about a population bomb. We're going to use up everything in the world. And, of course, all that's happened in the last 40 years since they claim there's going to be a population bomb that made us all starving is the world's gotten bigger and richer and technologically more advanced it's really a, a sort of a fight between a belief in a in a in, a, in a, a future that works for us and a belief that we're just destroying the planet left and right and there'll be nothing left well doctor the it's religion. been it th- th- this has been a fascinating conversation uh, I definitely want to continue chatting with you that th- th- this has been tremendous thank you for uh coming on today before before we let you go how do we find uh how do we find you guys online and uh, get involved with what you're doing sure we've got you know facebook and twitter despite being censored all the time we fight every single one and get our stuff restored for the co2 coalition you can join us there come to our website to check out our members they can come and speak to your uh organization in your community uh we're sort of the people who are saving the people of the planet from the people who think they're saving the planet. Um, we, have, we have a very high level of expertise. These are all PhDs in the sciences and economics. Uh, it's not true that there's no debate on what's happening to the climate as a result of uh, emissions of industrial carbon dioxide, which is also a great plant food that's greening the world. We're the ones who bring the science to the table. Well, thank you, sir. It's been an honor and a privilege, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Goodbye. brother. There he goes. Uh, this is, <laughs> oh, I just love some of these guys. We've got more coming up on the other side. It is the big program.